okay, there's no way to run away now. So um, for me, like the first minutes, they're always a little bit tricky because you're still nervous. So I'm going to just take like these three minutes looking into the crowd, okay? Trying to understand everybody here. <laughs> So, okay, um, my name is Andre Matos, and um, I, um, I'm going to talk about, about the VRAINX GPU. And I've been using it already for a while. Um, since it came out, it was not even ready for production on that time, so it was just like an active shade engine. Um, and I found it was quite interesting because of, obviously, speed. That's everybody, like when everybody talk about GPU, they only think about speed, period. And uh, um, trying to... Okay, so, uh, when I started using GPU, I didn't start using GPU for production, like I just said. I started using it in, in personal projects, and, and you, you just, you don't have any pressure. If something goes wrong, you just... You just don't really give a damn about that, right? It's just a pilot, and you just go with the flow. And um, back in 2013, I bought my first workstation when I moved out from a place called Azores in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and I started working as a motion designer. So my plan was not even to jump into 3D rendering at the beginning. And um, after my first paycheck, I bought my first graphic card. And it was a 780 Ti. And I was using a single card to render, and I noticed that it was, it was super fast. So, and when I bought the computer, I bought thinking about expanding it already. So I bought the main board with four expansion slots. And every month I was getting money, uh, my paycheck, and I was paying the rent of my flat. And then on the second month, I bought like three 780 Ti's, and for me it was like porno when I was looking into the active shade. And one thing took to the other one, and I start uh, doing... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I start doing short films, just to check if it was actually possible to use it for production. And I realized that everything that I was throwing to the GPUs, if I would start the scene with GPU, thinking about GPU production, it was working, it was stable, you were getting like super insanely faster render times, uh, and I was uh, rendering in 2K. So and I end up to, to, to do my, my main passion, that it's like, imagine a story, do storytelling, and then you're able to visualize everything from the beginning to the end. And this took me to another place, that it's like, you're living in Germany, you're working as a motion designer, you still need to pay the bills, GPU rendering is quite trendy now right now. And, um, I got to pay the bills, right? So in the first car exhibition that we did on that time, back in the time that I was a motion designer, working in After Effects, I saw two things in this picture that I really loved about, right? So, obviously the car, it was my main customer, it was Porsche, and the second part was the main LED. I <laughs> got you guys, right? <laughs> Okay, so the girls probably hate me already, and the guys will need to find a way to tell the girlfriends I didn't come to a porno convention, so. Um, and uh, I had my boss, I mean, I had to, to show everything. I was working quite straightforward using GPU techniques, and, they, and we kind of realized that we could output a lot of content using GPU technology. And the problem that we have in below-the-line communication is that we need to deal with this kind of stuff. They're literally like main LEDs like these that we have around here, but the pixel tessellation, it's way higher, so you get like 15K pixel mappings. 15Ks to do animation, forget about it. With GPU, bring it on. So we decided to start uh, doing production in a small scale, grabbing like one model, working in still frames to check if it was stable, if it was working the way that we wanted to go. And one and a half year later, we end up doing the entire production in GPU, homemade render farms. Uh, we spent a lot of money in farming. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, that's the, the pixel mapping that we had to deal back on that time. Um, gosh, it's been more than three minutes and my heart bite, heartbeat is still kicking in. Give me a break. 
So that was again the pixel mapping and, um, and how I could do that, right? We started with our first form. So we bought um, our render slack uh, source server and we fill it up with eight NVIDIA 1080 Ti's. And you may think like, okay, he's using eight GPU graphic cards to do rendering. There's lots of limitations with the, with the quite standard VRAM situation that, that the 1080 Ti's are offering. Like you say, you have 12 gigabytes of RAM. I think it's more than enough. Um, and I would like to just jump into the elephant in the room. Um, a lot of people, they still complain about GPU rendering and they always find excuses that it's not doing this, it's not doing that, it's not sh uh, rendering this shader, it's not uh, rendering deep. And uh, why there's still this public opinion that V-Ray next GPU, or in this case, back on the time, like V-Ray 3.6 or V-Ray 3.4, it was already production ready many years ago, but people were still struggling with the idea that you couldn't really do it for production. Well, that's the main problem, you know. People keep asking if VRT is production ready, and you say yes, it's, it's ready for production since version 3.3. And then they say, okay, so, cool, renders deep. No, it doesn't. It doesn't render deep. One day it will eventually render deep. But, like, the fraction of market that is asking for deep, it's so small that, no, that, that they always find the excuse to don't use GPU somehow. And the thing is that you can just grab V-Ray Advanced and render deep apart. You just replace the entire scene with a black material, you render the deep and you just shuffle in back again into the GPU rendering. Um, and this is the main problem with V-Ray GPU. V-Ray GPU was born <laughs> in a big family that come out of this. So. Everybody compares me to my successful older brother. Everybody in this room expects that V-Ray GPU will output the same things as V-Ray Advanced in that case. Uh, this will happen eventually one day. I hope so. It will, definitely. Uh, not pixel to pixel, like they keep saying. But uh, again, they are completely different render engines but people keep talking about them like if they were supposed to be the same thing at the end of the day. They're not, they're just different engines. But um, everybody expects this little man to behave like this big man here. Um, and um, I'm pretty sure that most part of the, of the crowd here can or are related to one of these categories. So if I can imagine the things that people are doing here, I will split in product visualization, print, architecture, and motion. And the things that we are doing in our company, we are doing a little bit of everything. So we do product visualization, it's the car itself. We are doing print, because the architecture, sometimes they need to get some close-ups or, or big scaling prints from, from the car. We have architecture because we actually need to build the environment. And once again, we have motion. Uh, and I'm just going to jump into a showcase that everything that we are doing using mainly Next GPU, only GPU. Everything is GPU once again, just to make sure that nobody's going to ask me tricky questions and I will find the solution to say. So, one of the main reasons why I think that uh, GPU was super, 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 super easy for me at the beginning uh, was the I grabbed the traditional shading methods that V-Ray had on the past, and I start to understand the limitations, so I start learning really fast how to shape without any experience. And then a few years later, they implemented V-Ray scans on, on the GPUs, and, and for me, it was, it was quite good, because I didn't have to spend that much time working on optimizing the, the shaders or, or thinking about details like uh, car paint flakes, and uh, since V-Ray Scan started working on GPU, it was, uh, it was quite easy to start using them. Um, we are working with CAT data. This is normally like you get a tessellation, and normally they have like from, from 10 to 20 million polys, so they are extremely, extremely heavy, and GPUs, they can handle them. 
Uh, and once again, uh, I would like to keep like talking about the prettiness of the scanners. Now look, look at the details. I mean, the leather, it's amazing. The carbon fiber, the pattern, it's, it's just random. It's a scan. It's exactly how it's supposed to be. And you don't really imagine how much time this saves in a, in a production. Below the line communication means that we're going to use these this, this images or these animations for not a longer period than two weeks. Like they are in car exhibitions, once the, the exhibition is over, they are all garbage. Uh, you don't have that much time to really produce all this content. There's a lot of people giving feedback, a lot of people asking for change the camera, a lot of people asking for fine tuning, and um, scans really help. Just drag and drop, they, they look good. Um, um, Image-based lightning, right? It was the main technique you see from, from the bottom to light it up cars. And with the new adaptive dome lights, they end up to being even more efficient. The renders are super, 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 super fast. Uh, you can use like one of our sponsors, like AGR Light Studio. You just fine tune the light and you just press render. And, and this is really done on the fly, you really, really have like a super short deadline and uh, v RT end up to be a super, super, super fun tool to use. And otherwise I wouldn't be able to output so much content in such a tight deadline. Um, okay, like implementation of content on backdrops or backplates or anything that you want to do, it's already working. Uh, remember that I had to struggle a little bit with Blago asking for the match shadow, match shadow, match shadow all the time. So there is not really any any limitation regarding implementing cars on different environments. Um, the architecture was was done also using VBRT. Uh, the volume light, it's here and it's rendering fast. It's clean. It's pretty. Uh, now let's jump into print. Okay, everybody that here is working with print, you know that you need to output like insanely big, spe big pixel mappings. When I was talking about 15K, 15K probably it's, it's, it's huge because you need to consider it's an animation. People that are working on still frames to do, to do print, they need to consider like insanely big pixel mappings. So I'm going to start with something less, oops, jump into the next one. Something not so impressive, I'm going to start with a 10K render. And um, it's just 10K, okay, I wanted to escalate slowly, but 10K, that's the minimum you grab for any kind of render that you're going to do for print in this case. Um, and this just stopped. Check something. Okay, yeah, that's not really, was, it was just a close-up from the random. And then uh, I start pushing V-Ray into, into bigger pixel mappings. And um, I was rendering 20K. I didn't have any limitations regarding the output with 20K. Uh, once again, V-Ray scans. Uh, oh, they are beautiful. Look at those guys. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Look, they even have the dust on the bump of the, of the ladder, you know? It looks, looks so nice. But once again, going back to the subject, like prints, right? We always have big pixel mappings. If you're going to actually press render on the CPU, you can just go home, take the weekend off, come back Monday, it will probably be rendered. But in these situations, my previous presentation, I brought some render times. I always had at the bottom, like the resolution that I was using and then render time. But to be honest, this time I didn't have time to re-render all the scenes to, to drop next GPU render times. So. I decided to exclude showing render times, but an image like this won't, won't take more than one, one and a half hour. Okay, that's insane. It's 20K for one, one and a half hour. And what about 35K in about two hours? It's insane, you know, it's just, you just drag whatever you want to drag to max, you just press render, and it will just re render. You go out, you have lunch, you come back, and you just compose it and send to print. Um, once again, scans. Look at this. You know, like, you don't understand how I love scans so much because you're standing in front of a big giant main LED like this one. When you have access to all this amount of detail, you want to use it. 
I'm not talking about rendering for web, all the compression, all the JPEG compression, they clean the detail, you don't get the sex to that. But on big LEDs, they really make a lot of difference. Uh, so 35K was easy going, took me like two or three hours, and this was actually using already V-Ray Next, this one. Uh, jumping into the next category, yeah, architecture. I know a lot of people say that they have like 128 gigabytes, seems. Yeah, one day, one day with the NVLink, probably in the close future, tomorrow, who knows. Where's John? John was around here. He's the one to talk about that. And um, of course, the VRAM is still a limitation in some, in some situations, but I mean, like more than 80% of people, they're not rendering something bigger than 64 gigabytes. Uh, and whatever you throw, it just renders. It just renders. And the light cache is really helping to to sample everything, and it's super fast. I mean, this render, I, I guess I did in 8K. I'm not pretty sure. Yes, this one was in 8K. Uh, and to get a completely, completely, completely rain render, I mean, the, I think the settings that I dropped on that time, if you're already a tiny bit familiar with V-Ray RT, you know that you, you should be here and you know that it's fast, but I dropped like 0 0.003 of noise with like 6,000 samples or 8,000 samples to really clean the noise completely, and it just renders. It's like, it's like super fast. Uh, pretty sure that if, if, if you didn't have the chance to try to try uh, next GPU, and if you have a good system with a dual Xeon, but you have like a single card, you will feel like, ah, oh, okay, it's a tiny little bit faster. But imagine the amount of money that you spend on a dual Xeon system and just buy like four graphic cards and buy a system like that one. It's just insane. It's super, super fast on a single machine. Uh, motion. And that's the part that I could, uh, that I was, that I'm still doing all the time. Uh, Multipass compositing came out, I think, on 3.3, .3, if I'm not wrong. There were so many, so many, so many releases. Uh, so you don't even have an excuse to don't use GPU if your composers are asking for multipass rendering. And once again, if they ask for deep, you just render using advanced. You just replace the scene with a black material, and it renders in two seconds. You're just trying to get the deep out of the image. Um, the volumetrics are probably like my favorite part. Uh, everybody loves volume, I guess. They give, they brings a lot of atmosphere to the scene. And um, and next, optimized a lot uh, the way that the volume is working. Uh, recently, I I decided to to just get some dark scenes to pop up the volume. And this is what you can get straight, uh, straight ahead without too much effort. You just drop a light, press render, and you get this. Um, the dust, it's, it's composed, so it's not working yet. Um, let me think about more excuses. Uh, well, imp improved bump displacement. Uh, there was some, some problems in the past with displacement, and they really improved in the work on that, and the overall visual effect of the displacement bump, it's way, way better, and regarding memory, it's even, it's even cooler. Uh, if anybody here is working in automotive business, you know that probably every single artist, they spend like two hours doing a, a tire shader, and nobody looks into the tire at the end. They just, they just shade the car super fast, and then they spend like the rest of the day just focused on the tire. Before this optimization, I always used like masks to block reflections because that's the way the rubber works. You always think that the tire is more reflective in one part and less reflective in the other part, but they don't. They have the same amount of reflectiveness. What they do, actually, there's a small bump on the, on the rubber that it's more glossy from, from one side, like anisotropic, and it's less glossy on the other side. And this, tire here was generated using one single bump map. Like it, it was supposed to be. I used like a, a shader to get some, some dirt on the surface that touched the, the concrete, but the tire itself, the sidewall, is just one single map, one bump map. And V-Ray Next, they did a great job optimizing the bump maps. Uh, yeah, and once again, production. 
this is the kind of content that I'm producing for the main LED. And I will say, like, the, the, the pixel mapping, it's, like, way more dense. I mean, you're talking about 15K. And they are probably wider than this room. So you get, you get to see all the scans, all the details. We are working on 50 frames by second. So it's an insanely huge amount of render time. Uh, and one of these animations, I will say that you, you just press render on the evening. You go home, you take a nap, you go back to the office, still rendering, OK? Not, don't get to, too much surprised. Uh, but it will render less in less than 24 hours if you have a, one single system with 1080 Ti's. And that's insane. It's super fast. I think that like most part of the, of the enthusiasm, uh, in my case, I think it's already gone, you know. <laughs> I remember that at the beginning when I started using the, the Next, uh, uh, it was mind-blowing. And right now, uh, I think that every time that I press render, I don't expect that something will go wrong or it will render fast in less than one day and next day I'm going to see in the office. It's happening all the time. I press render, it's stable, goes smooth, doesn't take more than three, four minutes by frame and you always get beautiful results. Um, performance, uh, well, there was a lot of people already doing some benchmarks uh, before I decided to, to go in the same direction, really to test if the results were, they were true or not. And I'm going to start with, uh, by showing the, the settings. Uh, so that's the, that's the settings of, of, of V-Ray Next uh, GPU. Uh, and I'm using a single frame, and I'm dropping the amount of noise to 0 0.003, and samples I'm using like 6,000. It's literally like a completely noiseless render. Uh, and I did a lot of recording of the rendering times. And on this specific scene here, um, they are both being sampled at the same time. They both are shaded with scans, and the, and the ray tracing time, uh, it's being calculated together with the compilation of the scene. And I don't know if everybody can see the, the time at the bottom. So on the left, it's 3.6. And on the right, it's V-Ray Next. And as you can see, it was way faster. One took like 11 minutes, and the other one took like 8 minutes from one version to the other one using the same scene. But um, we are talking about ray tracing, and these scenes are quite hard to, to compile. So you don't really see the, the impact on renders like this. So I decided to jump into, into scenes that were a little bit more simplified to really try to, to test the sampler. And I end up, oh, OK, sorry. This is comparing the, both the, the renders. V-Ray scans, they behaved a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit different. I think it was because of their aerial perspective that was not supported by 3.6. And I jump into an, another scene, again, to compare the, the render times. Uh, again, this model, it's, it's, it's shaded with, with, with scans. So I would say it's around like 10 million polys with uh, 8 gigabytes of scans. The scene compiles, the press render, and here they go. So 7, 8, 8. Yeah, next, it's done. <laughs> and 3.6, it's still going, 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 and it's done. Before anything else, I mean, it looks like I'm trying to kill 3.6, like asphyxiate 3.6. 3.6 was not slow. Next is super, super fast comparing to 3.6. That's the difference. And uh, these are the difference between results. Not so many difference. I will think that here in this case, since they improved so much the displacement map, you get a different results on the floor. Uh, and now let's jump into a scene that it's a little bit more simple regarding geometry. And please check this. Check the render times. Again, once again on the right you have next, and on the left you have 3.6. And I didn't finish my sentence, and I guess that next it's already done. And it took like six minutes. 3.6, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
0.003 of noise. It's completely clean rendered. I mean, I don't even use these settings for production because you're going to render animation at the end. Um, so I will say that uh, here the difference was again the displacement and the ambient occlusion was behaving a tiny bit different, but I don't think that's really important. Uh, conclusion thoughts. Uh, this was the part that I was supposed to say that V-Ray next, no, V-Ray 3.6, it's not slow. It's probably next that it's super, super, super fast. Uh, another topic that I would like to talk, it's, it's about price. Um, if you don't jump into a quarter solution, if you jump into a 1080 Ti in this case, you would, you, I can, I can even compare uh, HP workstation, probably not a good idea since it's one of the sponsors also. <laughs> Great workstations, but if you buy like two of those, you end up spending like 15K. Uh, and if you jump into a solution where you use like a render slack like these of those, you just buy a dual Xeon system, exactly like that one, you grab a plate that you can expand to eight GPUs and you just buy eight GPUs separately. Before anybody jump into the market and start asking me how could I manage to get the 1080 Ti's costing like 600 euros each one, this machine was bought like one year ago and since then the mining situation show up, so I'm sorry. And at the bottom nobody can say here, but before the mining boom, so, I mean this price here, before the mining boom, so fuck the miners, literally. Like they completely bow up the entire market. People are paying like twice the money for your GPUs right now. Um, and uh, regarding performance, I already showed what I was talking about. Sustainable growth. Uh, I think a good example, let's try to, to, to analyze what I did since the beginning. I didn't jump into buying random farms and spending lots of money without knowing that it was going to, to work out or not. So I start by getting my first machine with 780 Ti's. I end up understanding that they were working quite good, so one year later I upgraded to the, to the Titans, the super famous Titans, 2016. I got my first farm with 1080 T, with 1080's, sorry, and then came out 1080 Ti's. I updated like one year later for, for for IAA, one of the car exhibitions, because we really had a bigger pixel mapping. And in 2018, hmm, who knows? It depends on the mining situation, so I don't really know. Let's see what, what they drop in the market. And these are the, the machines rendering literally like 24-7, stable, no problems. Uh, one, one of the things that, that I understood immediately when I started using uh, V-Ray Next on my pipeline was I, d I, I had zero experience, almost zero experience in, in, in production, literally. So using the, the, the traditional method that you need to render a sequence using CPU, using random forms, it's quite stressing. Uh, you have a budget, you know, you need to press render. If something goes wrong, it's out of your pocket. So I decided to start working on my own system. And the first thing I noticed when I, when I, when I start working on GPU systems is that when you press render, you know, you just, you just let the, the, the production render on the background if you want to, to leave it over there and you don't see any drop of performance on your system. Your system will be clean. Since it's the GPUs that are working, you can still go to Facebook and browse a little bit. If you press render using CPU, you cannot really do that much. Uh, and very often, I, I work, I shade, I will a little bit to clean the noise, and then I just export the open XR, I jump into Nuke, and I keep compositing at the same time while the machine is rendering on the background. And this is literally impossible to use on a CPU system. Uh, the learning curve, you learn so much more faster. Uh, if you start from the bottom, it's just more intuitive. You just play around a little bit, run with the settings. You have the, the active shade on the background that now it's called IPR. Uh, so you just, you just progress faster in whatever you're trying to learn. Uh, the deadlines, I mean, I don't need to tell this part. Everybody knows that deadlines are quite complicated sometimes. 
Uh, and if you really need to consider the render times, everything gets, gets harder. Um, so you don't really need to consider this. If you press render on the, on the evening before the cut or the shot or whatever you're trying to render, it will be rendered on the next day. It's super stable. I had like minor crashes. Uh, so you always end up waking up in the morning and checking the beauty. <coughs> uh, customization, play by your own rules. And this is not really regarding Vray Next, this is about regarding having your own system. Uh, does anybody here have a work with render farms? Okay, did, did you ever try to call them and then ask to implement a script or a nightly version of any kind of software? What did they say? They didn't, right? So if you have your own system, if you have a script, if you have a plugin, whatever you're using, you can just implement in your system. And this is so, so, so safe. So I run away from render forms. I never used a render form from the beginning. <laughs> And, um, and there's one thing that I really would, would like to, to talk right now. It's, it's regarding the engine and it's regarding the entire company. For me, it's such an honor to be invited to, to step on this stage on the headquarters of, the, of Chaos Group. And I would like to, to talk about a specific story. Uh, yeah, it's a car exhibition that happens every two years uh, in Frankfurt. Um, it's... The, it's, it's it's the most important for Porsche. They always launch new models, all media is there. And we always, we always play with very rough deadlines to the production. Um, and uh, since I had the 15K pixel mapping, I ended up updating my system again, so I had everything to really do a good production. You know, I was aiming to do that. We had lots of content to produce. We had all the hardware ready set it up to go. And uh, I was working with the night lease versions of V-Ray. On that time, it was not V-Ray Next, it was V-Ray 3.6, because this was one, it was about one year ago on summer. And V-Ray 3.6 on that time on the night lease, it was already supporting V-Ray scans. Um, since it's a nightly, they always make sure that you understand that in some situations, they can just take the, the feature out. So uh, I shaded eight cars with V-Ray scans. I was super, super, super um, happy with the situation that I could use scans for the first time in production. Uh, and yeah, let's jump to production. So I ended up breaking my arms at that specific day. Um, I was riding a bike, small accident, and I had to be pushed away from the office for, for about a month. And a month in a three-month deadline, it's really, really a lot. Uh, most, of, most part of you probably they don't know, they think like we have like a super insane big office with 20 motion designers, with 20 shaders, with 20 guys doing lightning, with composers. This is all a single man job. Uh, so the, punk, the, the company freak out, they, they literally freak out uh, with the fact that I couldn't really keep going doing that. So they thought about outsourcing or trying to get somebody else to do that. And I told them, hey, relax, I will recover in less than one month, I will come back and I will keep doing this. And actually it happened. So I came back to the office, I was really, really happy. So I start keep working on a project and um, I installed the last nightly version from Chaos Group and I find out that all my cars were rendering in black because they decided that various scans is not the way to go right now. We still need to work a little bit longer on this. And I thought like, oh, what the fuck, man, I'm fucked up. I mean, it's already late, I need to work on this, I need to keep going, I need to press render, I need to do this. So I decided to talk with this man. Oops, go back. I decided to talk to Blago. Blago was always a, uh, a cool guy, we were close, we always had like funny chats on Facebook and stuff like this, but I never expected that they would actually do this. So I, I told, hey, Blago, I'm freaking out. I have a problem. I have eight cars shaded with V-Ray scans. I know that you guys just took it off scans from, from, from V-Ray. It's not working. It's not stable. It's not production ready. And they could manage to get me a build in two days with V-Ray scans working. I'm one consumer. I'm not a big company, I'm not a studio, and they could still do that for me. So thank you, KS Group. It's such an honor to be here. Um, 
and I just show up this guy, his face, because he was actually the one talking to me on Facebook. Could be somebody else, but he was actually the link, so he took care of everything. Um, and uh, yeah, go, 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 go. And it ended up to being quite a success with IAA. So thanks, Chaos Group. Um, and one thing that I was just talking until now was about production, 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 and so on. So um, I end up dropping a scene, rendering on the background, so you could see it. Okay, here going. It's calculating light. It's the light cache. It's, it's being calculated right now. Uh, this is V-Ray Next rendering right now. I'm streaming from from Germany, Frankfurt, one of our farms. Uh, I'm just going to maximize this to get a little bit more of pixels showing up. So, calculated light cache. These are the usage of the eight GPUs. These are the, the calculations, and uh, keeps cleaning, 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 cleaning. And just to speed it up this a little bit, I'm going to explain a little, a little bit what's what's happening. This is this is a, a analyzer that it's analyzing the usage of the GPUs. So the GPUs they jump until 100. They are cleaning the noise. They are cleaning the noise. They are sampling, 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 sampling. And then when they drop down, they just compile the next frame. Uh, you may think, oh. This is taking a lot of time to compile from frame to frame. But from this, from this specific point to that point doesn't take more than two minutes. You know, and we are talking about a model with 8 million poly. And models are already optimized because sometimes I need to run a 20 million poly. This is insanely huge amount of data. So the guys of the architecture, they don't have any excuse to don't render trees. Every scenes, they just compile and they just render faster. Sometimes it's many, the, the, the shaders and the problems with the VRAM. Um, and yeah, so it's compiling the scene, it's rendered, and then it's jumping to the next frame. Uh, and what you get at the end, and you probably you just, you just get a coffee, you go talk with the friends, you come back, you wait a little bit longer, and you get something like this. Uh, no, okay, PowerPoint, oh no. Nope, nope, I was accessing to the computer. So I was a little bit confused. So, and this is what you get at the end. As you may see, you don't see any noise. There's a little bit of MP4 compression here because this video is embedded in, 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 in PowerPoint. Uh, motion blur also on and a little bit of glow. Otherwise, I would just show the, the, the beauty. But this doesn't render longer than, than, than one afternoon. It's a complete turntable. There's like uh, 800 frames over here. Um, with frame interpolation, you can even extend, you can even slow down. I mean, little bit tricks from motion guys. Uh, and this is GPU rendering. Looks cool. It's not impressive. I mean, the, the, there's a lot of guys doing cool render, car rendering, and I don't even consider myself as, as, a, as a cool car render guy because I use V-Ray scans. So a lot of people, they use other oh, the renders that look cool because of V-Ray scans. Actually, it's true. But this took many, like hours to render. You know? How long would it take on a normal computer with CPU? Anybody here doing car animation or, or anything? How long would it take you to render like 800 frames with this kind of quality and this resolution? I would say how long? One, two weeks? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> a little bit tricky. You could say it will take me like one day and I would say, oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> it's possible, of course. It's dropping down the settings. Uh, but there's no noise over here. It's 0 0.003 and 4,000 samples for each pixel. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs>